Mr. President, officers of Casalt, members of Casalt colleagues, I count it a very great honor to receive this year's Honorary Lifetime Membership Award and to join the distinguished company of your other Honorary Lifetime members. And I'm especially pleased that you've associated the award with my efforts to promote the Common European Framework of Reference for Languages in Canada. As you may guess, the CEFR has played a dominant role in my recent academic life. It wasn't always thus, however. I came to the CEFR via the European Language Portfolio. And to the European Language Portfolio, because it seemed to me to be an instrument that could support the widespread pursuit of learner autonomy in second language education. As some of you will know, learner autonomy, what it is, where it comes from, how we make it happen in various language learning contexts, has preoccupied me for a quarter of a century. It was the Council of Europe that first introduced the idea of learner autonomy to second language educators back in 1979. It was a concept fundamental to the ethos of the Council of Europe's work in adult education at that time. And it referred to the empowerment of learners not just to manage their own learning, but to bring its outcomes to bear on their lives in the world outside education. The Council of Europe's concept of learner autonomy flowed directly from the European Convention on Human Rights, emphasizing the inescapably political nature of any worthwhile educational endeavor. 25 years ago, I was introduced to language classroom practice that took as its starting point the existing autonomy of learners developed that autonomy further in quite explicit ways and produced astonishing language learning outcomes. That, promoted me, that prompted me to wonder what was actually happening in the classroom in question and what it could yield in the way of basic principles that could be applied to the learning of any language by any learners in any context. And I've never stopped wondering since, in both senses of the word. I would now say that learner autonomy, as a fundamental pedagogical principle, rests on three interacting beliefs. First, that the most effective learning outcomes are achieved when they arise from the exercise of learner agency learners making choices, taking decisions, acting on their decisions, evaluating the results. Secondly, that the most effective language learning outcomes are achieved when that agency is channeled from the very beginning through the target language. And thirdly, that language learning is necessarily a social interactive as well as an individual cognitive process so that the autonomy of the individual learner is enacted and developed as part of a collaborative enterprise in which all other learners are developing their autonomy in the same way. That's easily said, of course, and it's something that I've managed to implement successfully in a number of language learning environments that I've been responsible for. But persuading others to make a leap of pedagogical faith is by no means easy. And that's where the European language portfolio came in. It was developed by the Council of Europe in parallel with the Common European Framework of Reference in order, among other things, to foster the development of learner autonomy. The essential reflective dynamic was provided by learner self-assessment using checklists of ICANN descriptors arranged according to CEFR levels and activities. 
I already knew the CFR in the sense that I'd read it. Indeed, I'd read also the two draft versions that preceded it. But in order to act effectively as an ELP developer and a member of the Council of Europe's ELP Validation Committee, it was necessary to make the CFR, its descriptive scheme, its levels and descriptors into a daily companion. And this necessity was reinforced when we decided to draw on the first three levels of the CFR to create frameworks to guide the design and implementation of English language support for ESL pupils and students in Irish primary and post-primary schools. Quickly enough, the wheel came full circle. The CEFR's action-oriented approach, with its concern for the development of the individual learner's communicative capacity, a capacity that is defined in terms of autonomous behavior, is a close relation of the ethos that drove the Council of Europe's work in adult education back in the 1970s. And the more I reflect on it, the more I'm convinced that my version of learner autonomy and the action-oriented approach were made for one another. That, in rather more than a nutshell, is the message I've attempted to share with colleagues in Canada and in many other countries. Although I'm recording these words more than two weeks before your meeting, I can already sense that the eyes of some of you are beginning to glaze over. And others are beginning to wonder, perhaps even to whisper to a neighbor, how much longer is this going to go on? The answer, ladies and gentlemen, is about five seconds. As long as it takes me to thank you again for the honor you've bestowed on me. Thank you and goodbye.